What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we are going to be going over two of the best little handguns on the market. My two personal favorites, arguably the two highest selling and obviously the two most popular pistols in its category. We're gonna be comparing the SIG P365 versus the M&P9 Shield Plus. Now before we're gonna do that, I wanna mention my patron supporters, thank you guys very much. It's because of you guys that we get to do all these awesome reviews. Uh, this video was supported by the patron supporters. This SIG and this M&P were both purchased with the patron dollars. If you want to help the channel, that is the best way to do it. There's a link in the description below. Just sign up. I also want to mention a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. Uh, the link's also in the description. I'd really appreciate it if you go down there and click that link and donate a few bucks to those kids. It would be just a damn good thing to do. Now, we're going to be comparing these two particular pistols here. As you can see here, this is the SIG P365. This is a 3.1 inch 9 millimeter barrel on top of a relatively small and lightweight pistol. The SIG P365 started the micro subcompact 9 millimeter trend that has been going on the past year and a half, and it really is the first of its kind. It was the first to take a pistol as small or smaller than the standard M&P shield and put a double stack magazine in it, allowing you to have 10 plus one, 12 plus one, 13 plus one, and so on. So very small package with a good amount of capacity for a capable caliber, that's the P365. On top of that, there's a huge amount of variance of this gun. You can get the standard compact, as you see here. You can get the X-Frame, which I have some footage of. Uh, the XL, which is one of my personal favorites. You can get the Comp, you can get the SAS, don't do that, but you could get that. Uh, there's so many other variants of this. Uh, this particular one is the basic version with the standard uh, SIG iron sights. However, they do make red dot compatible versions for this particular pistol. It comes with front slide serrations and rear, which is very nice, good texture, but I added a little bit of town grips here. A really good trigger. Oh, cycle the action here. You can see the reset's a little bit long, but it's still a pretty good trigger, especially for a gun this small. I was able to hit targets with this particular firearm at distances that I probably shouldn't have been able to. So it's very accurate, although because it is only 17 ounces, it does have quite a bit snappy recoil. It also has a very small grip, which helps a great deal with concealability. This is one of the most concealable, if not the most concealable 9mm pistol that I personally own and carry, as you can see here, coming right out of the carry rotation. Now, this is the new kit on the block for uh, last year, late last year. This is the M&P Shield Plus. Now, the M&P Shield actually started this the subcompact 9mm trend in single stack. Now they weren't the first to do it, but they were the first to do it so well that it made this gun incredibly popular. And still to this day, certainly one of the gold standards of carry. Many, many people still carry this standard shield and they're well protected because of so. And I think that the Shield Plus is not only as good as the Shield, but obviously a little bit better because it keeps all the same stuff plus adds a few features that I think are really important. First thing, adds extra capacity. It, like the P365, has a uh, double stack to single feed magazine, as you can see there, and it allows it to have a staggered feed, which allows it to have a lot more ma uh, rounds in the magazine than the standard shield. The uh, standard shield, to my knowledge, was what, seven plus one, I think, something like that, whereas the flush fit on this guy is 10 plus one, and then you get 12 plus one, or 13 plus one, I can't remember, in this bad boy, 12 plus one. So you get quite the capacity out of the shield plus which is really nice now the shield plus is going to be a hair different from the 365 where it's going to be airing on the side of a little bit bigger and the reason for that is because the standard shield was bigger and this fits in the same shield holsters which is perfect also it gives people variety which i like a lot the p365 is very comfortable to conceal but it's not quite as comfortable to shoot as the m p shield plus the m p shield plus also comes with better texture and it has a better trigger overall it's a little bit bigger 
It weighs two more ounces, although it has the exact same barrel length. And it also comes in tons of different variants. They have the pro model of this. They have the optics ready models. Smith & Wesson's always good at putting different variants out there as well. Not quite as many as the Shield yet, but it hasn't been out as long either. We can take a look at the sights on this one. Not nearly as good as sights on the P365 or on the uh, M&P Shield as a P365. The 65 sights are really impressive. I've always liked the green dot, the high definition front with with the uh, black rear with the night sights, that's an amazing sighting setup. Whereas this is your standard three dot night sight. However, uh, they do make options with fiber optic and night sights available. You just have to pay a little more for it. Uh, now the trigger, as you can see here, is really, really nice on the shield and it makes it not only really accurate, but it makes it very fast to shoot. And that's one of the big edges, in my opinion, on the Shield Plus over the 365, is that not only is it easier to shoot because of recoil control. You can control the recoil on this gun a little bit better because it has a bigger grip and because it's a little bit heavier, but the trigger allows you to shoot faster as well because the reset is in fact shorter and faster and it does push your finger out and it doesn't feel nearly as mushy as the 365, which I like a lot. This feels like a very quality trigger coming right out of the box in the M&P Shield. The magazine release, in my opinion, and the controls on the 365 are a little bit bigger and easier to use as well. So if you have to clear a malfunction, the slides easier to grab and if you have to eject a magazine and insert a new one that's easier to do because of the bigger magwell and the easier to use magazine release. Uh, this is going to be faster and more accurate than the P365 in most people's hands just because it is larger and the controls are larger and the trigger is a lot better. That being said, you're going to be carrying it most of the time, and the error on speed and accuracy isn't that far apart. A, a better shooter with this is going to shoot better than a worse shooter with this, so keep that in mind. There's people that can shoot the P365 better, but not very many. <laughs> but the advantage to the P365 is absolutely concealability. As you can see here, it is, even with the magazine in, significantly smaller than the uh, shield. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, when I, when I carry these, do I notice a difference? Not much. Uh, I carry them both in a, I think I carry them both in a phalanx holster actually. I think I have a phalanx holster for each one of these. No, I think this one is uh, tier one concealment actually. But uh, yeah, I, I don't notice much of a difference when I carry them, although this one uh, pushes on my belly a little bit less. Uh, as you get older, you got a little bit more hanging down there and uh, every once in a while this will rub on my stomach, or sorry, this will. Because uh, you can see there's just a bigger uh, overall grip there when I carry appendix, whereas this does not. So I would consider this more comfortable and smaller for sure, but not small enough for me to actually choose it over the M&P Shield. Now, I like the 365 a lot, but I got to tell you, if I had to pick one of these uh, for speed and accuracy, for sure, it would be the Shield Plus. Now, that's not the only category to consider. Not This one's smaller. This one's larger. This one's easier to conceal. This one shoots better. But how is the reliability? Well, the reliability on the M&P Shield Plus was absolutely excellent with all ammunition types. I cannot stress that enough. Very reliable gun based on a very reliable gun. The P365 is also very reliable. I have 2,000 rounds for this gun with, I think, maybe two malfunctions, something like that. And that could arguably ammunition related, that small of a percentage, and considering the ammunition that's during 2022, 2021 times, I'm going to obviously give that a pass. However, it is not perfect like this one is. Also, with the P365, this did have a history of starting off a little bit rough. Now, that being said, uh, it Often new guns, especially new pattern guns, do have a problem coming out of the gate and they did fix a lot of the issues, if not all the issues. However, I do still think about the issues every once in a while while I'm carrying this gun, and I don't think about the issues with the Shield Plus. So it just depends on whether or not you're willing to pay for peace of mind. Personally, I think that there's enough edge and speed and accuracy for me to choose this gun over the P365, but I'm also a bigger guy. I'm six foot four. It's easier for me to conceal a larger pistol. If you, if it's the difference between leaving this one at home and taking this one, then by all means, take the P365, it is still more than accurate and reliable enough. Uh, between the two, there's also a lot of accessories available. The Shield has a ton of accessories, including holsters and magazines and all that fun stuff. The Shield Plus uses the same holsters, which is good, but the magazines aren't quite as available yet. The P365 is definitely more available and is, I believe, the highest selling pistol of the last two years. So the holsters, magazines, and everything will be right available for you at the gun shop. And that is, again, another thing to 
considered. If you go to the gun shop and you like the, the shield better, but there's holsters and magazines and everything ready to go, this might be the better option for you. And interestingly enough, they're the exact same price. This one is coming in around four to five hundred dollars, somewhere in there, and this one is coming in at around four to five hundred dollars, making it again very hard to choose between these two pistols. I think at the end of the day, neither one of them is better than the other. Both of them are extremely reliable, both of them are extremely accurate. Both of them come with pretty good features, however the SIG could arguably come with a little bit more and also has more accessories available for it, however the Shield Plus does shoot a little bit better. Being the same price, I think that you just need to go to the gun store or wherever you're going to test one out, you can go to a fire or you can go to a range or something like that, an indoor range, where hopefully they'll have these as loaner guns and you can actually not only hold them, but maybe even shoot them and side by side and decide which one you actually like. Personal bias has a lot to do with which one of these guns you're going to choose, and I'll give you an example. Because earlier, I said that I would absolutely choose the Shield Plus over this if I could only pick one. Interestingly enough, my wife would choose the SIG P365, and that's probably because she has a lot smaller hands than I do, and she's a smaller statured person, so this grip is very much more comfortable to her. And I have to admit the P365 grip is relatively comfortable. The problem is, as you can see when I put my hand on it, there isn't a lot of room for my support hand unless I can kind of uh, finger it in there a little bit. But that is a pretty small grip for me personally, so I end up basically shooting this one-handed when I do shoot it. Now for most concealed carry situations, that is going to be more than enough enough accuracy for sure. I can shoot this at 50 plus yards, uh, one shot accuracy, but the speed on this isn't really to my liking. And the biggest thing I feel like that people don't talk about with grip is how you're gonna get a firm purchase on the gun out of the holster. And that is another real reason why I like the shield, simply because the P365 is so small without the extended magazine, I do have a harder time drawing it from concealment and that for me is an absolute. I need to be able to get that gun out and ready to go every single time. And if I struggle with it at all, I have a harder time carrying it personally, or I, I tend to go with the uh, extended magazine, which is why this one is loaded. The Shield Plus doesn't have those issues. I can run the Flush Fit magazine no problem because I can get almost all of my hand on there and I like that a lot. Uh, and this allows me to draw better, get on target better, and just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. So that is why I would go with the M&P. However, I have no problem with anybody saying that they'd rather have the SIG. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.